Hey, good afternoon. It's Sabine. It is January 16th, and here before you have my new article. Exodus 2.0 is upon us. Repent, trust, and obey. And perhaps you've already uh, seen the article if you found the link on the community page, but as always, you can pick it up by clicking on the description box over here. And in addition to finding the article, so the written text, you will also find an audio version. I just finished recording the entire article uh, in an audio file. For those who have difficulty to read or little time to read, so you can just put me on your uh, audio device when you're driving. Um, and here I'm going to give a brief summary of the article. So, we talked about this before. I believe and understand that the Lord is going to repeat the Exodus plague sequence in our time for specific reasons. In addition to the information I provided earlier, I've actually spent the past week researching the scriptures to find all the scriptural markers and the evidence with regard to the recurring of the plagues. Um, and this article is the fruit of that study. This message is prepared to inform and to instruct you to spiritually ready yourself, to inform and prepare your household about the coming Exodus pattern judgments the Lord will cause to fall upon the earth shortly, but also to enable you to inform and warn others. A translation widget is available on each page of my blog, so you can also auto-translate this article into all the modern languages. An audio version is available by clicking on the link over here, but it's also in the description box. And a video summary is what we're doing right now, so I will put that in the article later. So the second exodus is going to be experienced differently by different groups. So the Lord will mete out judgment according to our faith. So for the faithful believers in Christ, for the wise, for the overcomers, it will be a time to shine brightly for the Lord. It's going to be different for lukewarm believers. They will be given a measure of light, but the Lord will also use the sequence of plagues to beckon them and if need be, discipline them to turn away from sin, from the world, from idolatry, and direct their attention to Him wholeheartedly. It's time for them to learn to love, trust, and obey Him more fully. And then the unsaved, they will be shown grace and mercy, and they will, will be brought to repentance and salvation. That is the Lord's intention, if need be, by the strong arm of judgment, all the way to the entirety of the plagues. This is necessary for those who have hardened their hearts against him. And the example in the first Exodus was, of course, Pharaoh himself and his magicians. So here I give an overview of what I believe uh, attains to the wise, the overcomers in Christ. You can read more about that over here. And then an overview of our need to be ready. And in the article, I've given a couple of icons where we need to take action. So all the to-dos are marked with an icon, in addition to the visual clues the Lord is giving us and the time markers. So the call to be ready ready ourselves spiritually and this article at the end will provide all the insight and all the tools to be able to do so to ready ourselves spiritually to put on our ephesians 6 armor to uh, rehearse and exercise ourselves in warfare prayers and repentance prayers not just for ourselves but also to be able to help others then an outline what this uh, sequence of plagues will be like for the lukewarm and the wayward and the same for the unsaved and the heart hardened because each group is going to have a different experience and then for us to be sure that the recurrence is found in scripture I first give a general overview of scriptures that will have an end time fulfillment that pertain to the repetition of the plagues of Egypt. You can find them over here. 
And then I'm going to cover each individual plague of what it was at the time, what the spiritual application was, but also what I believe and understand, this is my understanding, based on research of the scriptures, uh, by the leading of the Lord, in addition to the prophetic words brought, uh, brought forth by people who I consider to be trustworthy servants. So each plague I'm going to cover, uh, what happened at the time, what I think will happen in our time, and how to best be prepared for each plague. The plague one, water to blood, the plague pertaining to the frogs, pertaining to the lice, to the flies, the killing of the livestock, and then the boils, the sores that infected the Egyptians and their animals, most likely that will be repackaged in our times as a pandemic. Then the judgment from the heavens started, plague seven, hail and fire from the heavens. The eighth plague of locusts, either manifesting naturally or supernaturally in our times. And then, of course, the most severe plagues, the plagues of the three days of darkness, patterned after the three days during the Exodus, of course. But we have other examples in the scriptures, in the days of Jonah, of Jesus, of Lazarus, and of Paul. So here you can find the cues as to this is what we need to do. Anoint our home prayerfully before supernatural darkness falls. Prepare ourselves spiritually. Educate and exercise ourselves in repentance and warfare prayers. Ensure our household's physical and medical emergency preparedness as well before this happens. This is the time to redeem. Is right now. At the end of this page, you will find all the resources to help you do so. These are the visual clues that the Lord is giving preceding these three days of darkness, the red and lowery skies, visual warnings of radiant color, northern lights uh, type phenomena. Before darkness falls, so these phenomena will be in the heavens or in the skies two to 48 hours before darkness falls at noontime is what scripture says. So that will be our cue to go home and start preparing. If you see these red skies and aurora type lights and you're on your way to work or school, cancel these plans immediately. Go home, gather your household and others. You seek shelter within your home and begin to prepare. So, and if you inform others, um, not uh, if you do that, like individually, when you speak to them, stress the importance of them to repent and turn back to the Lord. So they will be. Uh, they find salvation if they're wayward or foolish for them to wholeheartedly turn back to him to uh, ensure that they are safeguarded when these judgments fall. But these judgments will, of course, be preceded by the initial judgment. So the turning of water into blood and all the subsequent plagues will be experience clues that the Lord is giving us, which will lead us towards these more severe plagues. So specific instructions, what to do um, on the level of your household are found over here. And the Lord gives us time markers, the bride's adornment in late winter. This pertains to the wise who will shine forth Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 2. We can find that marker in nature, in the blossoming of the almond tree. You can read about that over here. So we have the time frame after the Feast of Dedication, before Passover. We're currently in, and I think this will transpire in between these two bookends. And the Lord gives us, I believe, clues to pinpoint that even a little bit sharper. And then the most severe plague, the death of the firstborn. Both of the unsaved and disobedient people, the Lord had instructed them to stay indoors, to apply the blood on their blood on the doorpost, so then they would be safe and their firstborn would, would also be. So the requirement of the Lord to both trust but also obey him is the key to take away from this preparation toward the recurring of the plagues.
The Lord struck the firstborn at about midnight, when a loud cry was heard. We can read that, of course, in Exodus 11, but also in Job 34. In obedience to the word of Moses, the Israelites afterward asked the Egyptians for gold and silver valuables, and the Lord ensured that they would indeed receive them. So, by the help of prophetic words, I was led to study the scriptures, and we can find references to the death of the firstborn in the books of Matthew, Jeremiah, and Hosea, the weeping of Rachel over her children. The current day wise virgins living godly lives and the firstborn offspring uh, in their entire seed line, meaning children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, are going to be safe. That is not going to be the case for those who are considered lukewarm. Uh, scripture even refers to evil servants. They are not under the covering unless they repent and turn back to the Lord in due time. So the entire sequence of the preceding plagues is to beckon them to wholeheartedly return to the Lord. But there will be believers found at the end of this plague sequence who have hardened themselves against the Lord's beckoning to do so. So the unsaved and the foolish will not have this protection. So the death of the firstborn pertains to children, but also to animals. So that could pertain to people's pets as well. Then two other types of firstborn, starting with the U.S. as the spiritual daughter of Babylon, also referred to as the tribe of Ephraim, the Firstborn among the nations, having once been privileged and greatly blessed, dedicated unto the Lord, at least in part, now having degenerated into idolatry and reprobation, meaning the nation is ripe for judgment, and that will be a sign unto the rest of the world. Then the firstborn also has an application for the faithful overcomers as well as for the innocent in Christ, which is explained in this section. And the reference to the innocent uh, in Christ, meaning the children and the feeble-minded, that is researched in more detail in this article I wrote on my Dutch blog, which has an auto-translate function to read it in English or other languages as well. So you can find all the scripture markers pertaining to innocent in Christ in relation to the Lord's coming in the rapture. <clears throat> and of course, the rapture of the faithful and the innocent is expected before worldwide sudden destruction. The event of the death of the firstborn is marked on Passover and the ultimate deliverance uh, Led, being led through the Red Sea, is marked on the 21st and 22nd of the first month. What happened with the dedication of the remnant of the firstborn in the wilderness is marked over here. And here you have all the prophetic markers for the coming five weeks. The celestial signs, the world events, the elite are believed to be their final preparations with the WEF meeting, the NATO and EU meetings. All the markers of pending judgment at the end of February and the beginning of uh, end of January, beginning of February, and the markers in the text pertaining to the plagues are also included on the calendar over here. So you can get a sense of the Lord helping us to pinpoint the onset of the plague. Um, in the season we're currently in, and I believe, of course, the bookend is on Passover, but he can, and Scripture speaks of him, speeding up um, prophetic fulfillment in order to save uh, flesh, to save people. So the timing of the Exodus 2 plagues is analyzed over here. I believe the uh, Tubi Shavat um, Commemoration on the 15th, the New Year for the Trees, is a really important marker. In foreshadowing what will happen to the beast from the sea, the perception and the application of these judgments as a sign of Jonah, a refuge by faith, Psalm 91, tools and material for our spiritual preparedness, 
warfare prayers, and also preparing our households. Links are found in the description box. Much love.